Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Before we start this video, I'd like to um, show you a little package of brushes which I've just received from Japan from uh, Drawwell, which is the company where I get my brushes from. Brushes from, and um, usually I use um, the red ones that they uh, make, which is called the Golden Nylon. And um, I've just recently decided that I want to try the next grade up that they have. They basically only have two grades, and the next grade up is the Maestro. And because I needed a few highly pointed brushes for detailing, I thought I would order them and they just came recently and they really aren't very expensive, just a couple of dollars each. So you could order quite a few of these if you wanted to and they have the most amazing points and they, they keep these points. They paint really well and uh, they're absolutely brilliant and they last for ages. The red ones I've had for years and years and obviously as they get older they lose a bit of point but um, no, they're very good. So I'll put the information about ordering them from Japan in the description below and um, I don't get any commission for this this is completely uh, you know just a recommendation for a company I've used for more than 20 years and um, it's run by a, a, a single individual man called Mr Miami who is very nice to deal with and he will try his best to get them to you with no problems and he even knows how to deal with customs so we didn't have any problems getting them through the customs here into France, which is often, let's put it mildly, a nightmare. So today, having done that, I'm going to paint some, um, I'm going to paint some pansies. So I'm going to paint this on a piece of bamboo mixed media paper by Hanna Muller. Um, this is um, a sort of, um, it's hot press, uh, sorry, it's cold press, so it's got some texture and it's intended for all sorts of types of paint. So it should be pretty good um, with what uh, I'm planning to do today, I hope. And uh, I'm aiming to do a sort of fairly traditional sort of pansy painting, something along these lines. <clears throat> and um, so I've just picked up a pencil, just an ordinary uh, HB pencil and we're going to sort of start just off centre, just a little higher than centre, just a little bit to the right with the first pansy. And this is how I draw them. I just do a set of brackets, you know, like when you put something in brackets in your writing, but back to back. So two sort of back to back semi, almost semi circles. And then coming out from there, I, I do a sort of upside down heart. <clears throat> and that's the um, bottom petal. And pansies have five petals and the ones to the side come out like this. This is slightly simplified, but it does make it an awful lot easier. And then there are two petals at the back like that, which often look like one. So um, you have to uh, tell yourself that uh, there are actually two petals there. And then we're going to put in a stem um, coming down like that. And then the leaves have a kind of um, sort of, uh, scalloped arrangement. You can be fairly free with the leaves, though it doesn't really matter if they're not botanically correct. And I can't remember off the top of my head whether or not they are uh, paired like that or whether they alternate, but um, we'll just do something like that um, for the time being. And then we'll put another one over here and uh, the back petals like that, and then the stem coming down like that. Just give yourself a very sort of light indication of where things are going to go. And up here we'll have a uh, bud, perhaps. And there's the stem of the bud. Maybe we'll have a leaf going behind that flower. You just have to kind of try to let it 
develop a little bit. And we have another one up here. And you can relax the, the form. I mean, you start off doing it in this kind of fairly um, prescriptive sort of way. But when you have got your pencil moving, you'll start to just kind of let it all flow a little bit. And we'll put another one down here. And just make sure that whatever you do, you're not stressing about it. You can always rub it out, start again, it doesn't matter. And um, I think the only one thing that you might, might want to concentrate on is making sure that you've got the right kind of paper and that your paints are reasonably fair quality because if if your paints aren't, they they won't um, it won't work. You know, you, you're not going to be able to do this method with gouache because you need a certain amount of flow for this. So uh, you need your Winsor & Newton, maybe Cotman or Daniel Smith if you've had a nice birthday present this year. Um, and you can do as many as you want. I probably won't paint all of these for this tutorial, but you can see how they go, can't you? So there we are, that's a page full of um, pansies and put another bud down here perhaps. Just try to let it flow and then um, as far as the colours go you're pretty much, um, let's put these out of the way, I probably will need a three as well as a seven I might or I might need a five I don't know let's try the five I haven't tried a five yet and a seven there. Let's not get too fiddly with the, with the sevens, oh, sorry with the threes. Uh, let's use these paints. I've got a palette set up here. This is quite a nice one, this square one with these sections, which I think are for Japanese food. Um, and I'm probably going to use uh, this colour and this colour, turquoise and this mauve, purple or whatever you want to call it, perhaps this colour here. And then the leaves will mix from the yellows and the green and perhaps the blue. So pop that there. And so you can see it, as somebody said the other day in a comment, um, it's important to be able to see the colour mixing. And I will need another palette in, upon which to mix things. So we'll start with that. And we'll need a few more of those. So I'll we'll just grab a few more. You can get little dishes similar to this for quite cheap price. Whee, an Amazon. Um, you can get the ones that they use for dipping sauces and so on. I think you can get 25 for about $15 or something like that, so it's not too bad. Okay, so now you sit down and you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to take some time for myself here and uh, first pansy. So you are going to wet the petal and make sure you wet the whole petal. And uh, you can look at it sideways to make sure you have wetted the whole petal. And let's say we're going to do this one in, in violet, purple, mauve or whatever. And then you're going to drop the paint in like that. And what is key about this, then you're going to just pump in a bit more paint. So just tap your paintbrush like that. And you can see how it's running, can't you? spreading out. I tried that on some sketch paper just before I started this and this is what I got, a right royal hot mess and that's because the paper doesn't accept the paint in the same way that in the way that you want it to, right? Um, so now you have a couple of choices. You can grab something sharp like one of these pens and you can draw in veins just letting it bleed along the line of the pen stroke. So you can do that. And you can also, and you can sort of add a little bit more like that. And you can go around the outside edge. And if, as I do, you feel like you could put, I'm a bit heavy handed today. So you can, Dab that out, and if you 
if you think, you know, what's the word? Um, outside the box a little bit. You can say I meant to do that anyway. Okay, so then paint the next one. And as you go along, you'll get the hang of how to do this best. In which, by which I mean the amount of water that you put on. You're going to judge that. You don't want any puddles because then it doesn't flow properly. I haven't painted pansies for ages, so. Have to bear with me. I probably should have started with one that wasn't smack bang in the middle, but you know, me being me, cack-handed Diane. Um, but I think it'll be okay in the end. Now, the back ones, you just paint with a very light, very light version. You don't, don't let those ones run, so you just put the paint on. Like that, and if you want, depends on what your particular one looks like. Oh, I think that's amazing. You just want to do more and more of that. Okay. Then maybe we will pick up a little bit of greenish and just drop in a stem. Let that sort of fade away down there. And then to make the shadow on there, we'll add a little bit of blue. Just along the outside edge, just a tiny, tiny, tiny thing. And then for the centre, obviously it wants to be yellow. So we'll just pop some yellow in there. And I quite like the effect when it bleeds out into the outside edge. Um, but also you might want to put in some, uh, some, some black or something darker as well, just here. Like that. You might, might not. You could add some, a little bit of black down here too. Okay, so then we could do a leaf and I'll show you how to do a leaf. It's just how I do it. There's about nine, nine, well it's not, no it's not, that's, that's not true. That's not how I do it. That's how I do it sometimes. So we'll wet two of them. And this is this is called wet in wet for obvious reasons. And we just let that soak in a little bit. But it's not too crucial how that works. And then we can pick up various colors. And um, a turquoisey color is a nice um, complement to mauve. So we'll put a bit of turquoise and we'll put a bit of uh, a sort of greyish green and maybe a little bit of blue and then maybe a bit more turquoise here and we just we just let that bleed and then we'll do the same up here but perhaps perhaps not quite so dark and perhaps we might lift out a bit of this to adjust it because we want, we want the, the uh, petal um, leaves to be um, Delicate, really, I think. I quite like them to be delicate and and misshapen. I don't want them to be um, anything remotely resembling regular. I'm trying to avoid doing that. Not always easy. One part of it needs to be a bit darker than the other side, so we'll do that. Okay, um, we could do this one up here now. You could always wet um, more than one and come back when you've gone round and we always do the 
I always do the bottom ones first. So you can wet this one, wait for it to soak in a bit. And this one maybe, maybe this one. Um, and so this one at the back, I think I'm going to do her turquoise. I think, shall I? Why not? It's only a little one. So just pump in, just, just, just dab like that and let that run. And then you can drag it round to the bottom if you want. This one over here, <clears throat> uh, we'll do this in a sort of mauvey blue. So I've got um, cobalt blue there. Cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of violet. I did wet that one, didn't I? Seems to have tried. So I'm learning something about this paper, which is quite new to me. If that happens, just pick up some water on your brush and just let it go down like that. And then a little bit more paint, drop it in and let that run. Not keen on that color and get rid of that. Again, another good thing about this paper, which is one of the reasons why I like it, is that you can correct. You see, that's gone. Didn't like that color. Bye bye. I want these to be, i come back to him, I want these to be, uh, what's the word, um, loose, that's the word, there we are, that's the word. So I think I might do a whole bunch of violet ones, so just pumping that in and letting that run. Just add a little bit more here with the violet. And then I'm going to paint these ones in blue. And drop a little bit of violet in here. You can just play. Do whatever you think looks, looks nice. I mean, I quite like the battered look of that one. Quite like the fact that it looks a bit bruised and bashed around, because you know, to be quite honest, that's the way they often are in our garden. And you'll find when you're doing this that, as I said, I think I already said this, when you get started, you'll relax a little bit and you'll say, "Oh yeah, I like the way that's running. That looks rather cool." And sometimes, and this doesn't always work. Sometimes you can. Come in on the outside edge and just very, very gently drop in an outside line like that using fine pointed brush. Because often pansies have that. And you can also come in from the outside edge. And you can drag down, if you've got a nice, reasonably fine brush, you can drag down too. I don't like what I've done here, so I'm going to remove that. I don't like two, it looks like two eyes. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, so then we'll come to this one and we'll just do the back, back ones lightly like that. And he wants a stem. Maybe we'll do this one, a nice turquoise stem. And then you can Wet the paper using a colour if you want. You don't have to always wet the paper using water with no paint in it. 
can do that and then come in with some darker turquoise. And if I, don't, I know that leaves are not generally speaking turquoise, but But they look pretty like this. It makes a nice little framed picture to give to somebody. And you will probably come back and do a second layer. You don't have to do the leaves turquoise. Here's another colour. Lovely blue. That's cobalt blue and turquoise. One of the paints I use is Old Holland and that's an Old Holland turquoise. Um, I think Windsor and Newton do a turquoise, but it's not, it's actually not turquoise. So don't buy that. So then what have we got here? Oh, that's a leaf. Okay. So we'll put, and I'll put the veins in later. Okay. So if this one is, is kind of, um, what's the word? Uh, oh, not as important as the flower. So we just keep that leaf really dim. Make that one wet and um, And then we're going to do very pale back petals like that. We could put a little bit of yellow in this one because it's dry now and perhaps in that one. And if we put it in there, it will probably run, which can look quite nice. Okay, so this one up the back here, I'm going to punish it for being unresponsive to my colour choice and I'm going to do this one yellow with some quinacridone gold if I can find it. There it is. Let me put some quinacridone gold here and on the petals at the side and we make the back ones really light just because it looks better that way and then I want some dark brown and I'm just going to grab some, I think this is Burnt Umber. Pop some of that in the centre there. If you want to make Burnt Umber darker, just add purple. That will give you a darker brown, a pleasant darker brown that doesn't look like mud. And keeping it all light, come down here with a nice turquoise. And blue. Okay, and the thing is with a painting like this, you can you can do it really light like I am, or you can put a lot more, um, what do you call it? You can put a lot more 
detail in or you paint it a lot more accurately. Um, or you can, um, once it's painted, you can come in with your pen and you can do some uh, sharpening up with your... That's really good, isn't it? Um, here we're going to have a, one that's opening. So we have our nice turquoise stems. I'm not going to go up there. <clears throat> and then, <coughs> sorry, I will add a little bit of dark green. And then, you know, quinacridone always does wonderful things. If you add it to something that you think, uh, I don't know. Just do something like that. And then you could come in with some, I mean, just some sort of thing coming out here, perhaps a sort of sepal of the sepal or whatever. Generally speaking, things improve when you let them dry. I usually have a tissue in my hand so I can dab out bits of colour because I like that sort of patchy look, personally. Another violet one over here. And this paper seems to be quite keen on the patchy look, so that's fine by me. Uh, that's violet. So let's put some mauve in the middle. That one's in the distance, so it's got absolutely no detail in it whatsoever. I'm going to put another blue leaf in here. Some of the leaves are really blue. If you look closely at nature, you will notice that it's not bright green. Anyway, I mean, the thing is, we create our own world, don't we? and nothing more so than when we paint. And if you're just <clears throat> brave enough to just do it and don't care what anyone else might say. A lady on um, here told me a story in the comments yesterday about when she went to a painting class for beginners and found herself surrounded by non-beginners and how she was humiliated by the tutor who made her feel completely incompetent. And obviously it put her off painting for her whole life. And you hear some tragic stories, don't you, in your journey through life? And I don't know that I've heard many art-related ones much more upsetting than that, because I don't know how anyone or why anyone would laugh at somebody's initial efforts in painting so much and humiliate her in front of other people. I mean, she's no artist in my book. That's terrible. I mean, honestly, that is just a shocking thing to do. Absolutely awful. I, I, I can't hardly imagine. Poor lady, she must have cried probably all the way home. I think I would have done. Well, I'm really glad that she's found us. Okie dokie, so we'll put some veins in and I'm going to go down an, a notch. I'm going to go to number three, number three. And let's 
go to the middle there and just pick up some, again, some turquoise mixed with violet. And we just draw in some, some veins. As I said, I always have my piece of tissue paper in my hand when I'm doing a proper painting so that I can dab it if I put too much paint on. Right there, just dab it off. It will dry a little bit lighter, so I don't want them too, too faint. But then we don't want them too dark either. So let's put a little bit of yellow in this one. Doesn't need to be much. Have I missed anybody out, this one? That one needs a bit more. I like the way that one's come out. A bit more there. Okay, so that's really nice and delicate, and I'm going to get a little bit of spatter, I think, uh, if I can find a long-haired brush, which would probably... Yeah, there it is. And just plenty of water. Test it out first. Just a little bit, not too much. Then we let that dry and we'll rub out the pencil marks and then come in with maybe just a few little darks, just in a couple of um, critical places. But apart from that, I think that's probably done. Okay, so I am just using my nifty eraser here in this holder. So it's another Stettler product, I think, a oh, Pentel. Um, really handy because you can just gently remove the superfluous pencil marks without uh, being inaccurate and swiping it across the, the delicate little flowers. And then Another delicate little instrument. Um, this is a gentleman's shaving brush. I think it's probably got some kind of, I don't know if it's synthetic hair on it. Anyway, brush off. It's better than using a paintbrush because I don't know about you, but um, until I got this to save me any traumas, if I used to sometimes occasionally pick up one of these brushes, this is a, a Hake a Hake brush from, and, and do this, and it had paint on it. So you make a nice mess of your painting if you do that by accident. But if you always stick to your shaving brush or a particular brush that you cannot mix up, then you won't have that happen. So, okay, I am actually going to stop there, I think. When it's completely, completely, completely dry, I might come in and put one or two little touches of darkening. So if when you see the photo of this on the video, you're saying, oh, she didn't show us that bit, that's why. But I probably won't. So anyway, there we are. One delicate little pansy painting. And when you do this, take it out of here, because every now and again, you need a pair of scissors. Uh, and that's actually really thick paper. It doesn't tear against that, uh, that ring binding. So remove that. And pop it in a frame. And there we are. Try not to get the reflection. Bob is your proverbial uncle. Nice gift. So I'll let you go. Don't forget to... Uh, Click subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when another video has come up. And I'll let you go now and I'll see you again tomorrow. So bye now, everybody. Bye bye.